This is it guys, the car that a lot of you have been waiting for. The brand new, all new 2022 Perodua Alza. Like the original version, which by the way is now 13 years old. This is a compact MPV with seven seats. Now clearly a lot of things has changed in those long 13 years. And this second generation Alza is a massive improvement over the original in every single aspect. So should this be your next new Perodua? Let's find out together. The original Alza was a huge success for Perodua, with almost 400,000 units sold since 2009. It sold so well that at its peak, 3 out of 5 MPV sold in Malaysia were Alzas. In fact, in its last year in 2021, Produa still sold as many Alzas as they did the much newer, far more modern 7-seat SUV. So, we are now getting a second generation Alza, which by the way, is only the second ever Produa model to get its name carried forward into a new model. Think about it, the Kanchil turned into the Viva, and then Asia. The Kambara changed into the Nautica and now Ativa. Only the Myvi has kept its name across generations and now the Alza as well. This time the Alza is very closely based on the Daihatsu Xenia and Toyota Avanza. There is also a fourth twin in the family, the Toyota Velos which is meant to be a more premium upmarket version of the MPV. Of course, Prodoa has given Alza its own styling both outside and inside, but the relationship is very clear to see from the shape of the car. And just like the Ativa SUV, the new Alza is also built on the Daihatsu New Global Architecture or DNGA in short. At the front, the LED headlamps are exactly the same as the Avanza and Xenia, but what differentiates it is the very large and bold grille with a chrome bar down the center carrying the Perodua logo. The bumper houses the LED fog lamps, though unfortunately there's no LED daytime running lights for the new Alza. To get DRLs, you need to buy the optional gear up Prime body kit. This adds on the front lower kit with DRLs which start up with a nice animation as well as a rear body kit and a larger rear spoiler. Compared to what we've seen from Gear Up recently, the Blaze kit for the Artiva and the Ace kit for the Myvi, the Alza's Prime package looks very good, far more subtle and tasteful I think. In terms of size, this has clearly grown over the original Alza. So for length, this is over 200 millimeters longer than before. It's also slightly taller, slightly wider, although the wheelbase is exactly the same as the old car at 2750 mm. With the new DNGA platform, however, the new Alza is only 10 kilograms heavier than the old car despite being quite significantly larger. It's also around 100 kilograms lighter than both the Mitsubishi Expander and Honda BRV, as well as 300 kilograms less than the Proton Exora. As for suspension, the Alza rides on MacPherson struts up front and a torsion beam in the back, but Perodua has applied its own unique setup here. The Alza sits very low to the floor with a ground clearance of just 160 millimeters, far less than its competitors and even the closely related Toyota Velos and Avanza, which all ride above 200 millimeters off the ground. Perodua has consciously chosen to make the Alza a very low MPV as before, to aid its handling as well as to make getting in and out easier for kids and the elderly. Another benefit, it makes the Alza look quite surprisingly sporty for an MPV, as if the owner has fitted a set of lowered suspension on it. That's quite nice. The wheels are new, 16-inch dual-tone alloys with an interesting spinning design, although the base Alza X gets smaller 15s instead. A first for Produa are the rear disc brakes on the Alza AV to go along with the electronic parking brake switch inside. 
also a pro dua. First, the X and H Alzas get rear drum brakes and a traditional handbrake instead, replacing the space saving foot parking brake on the old Alza. At the back, it's largely the same as the Toyota and Daihatsu this car is based on. It's got the exact same lights and largely the same details. But the taillights are quite interesting because it's all LED for the very first time for a Pro Dua, right down to the turn signals and the reverse lights. But surprisingly, my favourite part of the car at the back here is the simple logo. This has a new font to it, it looks quite cool and it sort of reminds me of the guitar brand Fender. Looks pretty cool, right? Inside, I think the interior looks pretty decent. It does have quite a few nice design touches like this chrome ring around the center vent. And I do like this red bit around the cabin. It's nowhere near as garish as what we've seen in the Myvi and the Ativa. On the other hand, however, this center console looks a little bit too empty, a little bit too plain, too flat. It's almost as if the designers just completely ran out of ideas of what to put there. As you can see, the entire aircon controls are taken directly off the Ativa and simply grafted onto this plain black plastic. It just looks so out of place. One more major complaint I have is the steering adjustment. Again, for a brand new Perodua in 2022, we still don't have any telescopic adjustment for the steering wheel. I just don't understand it. Why Produa? The rest of the cabin is quite similar to the Ativa. The 7-inch instrument display and digital speedometer is the same as are the buttons on the steering wheel as well as the gear lever. New for the Alza is the camera button as it gets Produa's very first 360-degree camera system. First impressions, it looks quite low res and the four camera feeds are separated by black borders instead of being stitched together. But hey, it's better than nothing. The 9-inch center screen itself is quite interesting. On the AV, it gets a new interface, but what's more important is the small logo at the bottom. That's right, the new Alza comes with Android Auto, another first for Produa. Apple CarPlay is not available unfortunately, although most head units we've seen usually have both connections, not just one. Perhaps CarPlay will be added as an update later on. The plain center console aside, the Alza's cabin is quite stylish. The dark red, almost brown inserts give it a bit of a premium look, as do the diamond cut details on the door cards and the quilted stitching on the part fabric, part leather seats. If you want full leather upholstery, you can get the Gear Up leather seat cover, which again look and feel quite good too. The red highlights and diamond stitching details give it a bit of a Lexus vibe. Cool stuff. Another interesting bit is that the Alza will come standard with an RFID sticker for toll payments. This replaces the built-in smart tags like in the Myvi and is not only a first for Perodua, but for any brands in Malaysia as well. The rear is perhaps the Alza's strongest aspect. Entry is extremely easy as the step up into the cabin is not too high thanks to the low suspension. The rear doors open up real wide as well. Once inside, you get very good legroom, 90mm more than the old version despite having the same wheelbase. Here you can slide the seats backwards or forwards to balance legroom with the last row and recline the backrest as you wish. Paired together with another Pro Dua first, the top-mounted rear aircon vents with blower control, and this becomes an excellent car for a small family. You can slide the seats all the way back to get a huge amount of space, fold the center armrest down for extra comfort, use the two isofix anchors to fit child seats easily, and push the last row seats down flat into the floor for a huge boot. This Alza, I think, can be a substantial upgrade for current Myvi owners looking for a bigger car. Produa says 40% of current Alza owners use it as a spacious 5-seater anyway, and with the new version, it's significantly better when used that way. Still, the Alza works well as a 7-seat MPV too, of course. 
Access to the third row of seats is now even easier with the one-touch tumble function for the second row seats and the space available is definitely an improvement over the old Alza. You can quite easily fit adults in all three rows in this car with legroom to spare for everyone. The last row seats are still quite hard and flat but as a compact MPV, this is still very impressive. Boot space has been much improved as well. With all seats up, there's actually some usable space left now with 137 litres compared to just 83 in the old car. Fold the third row down and you get 498 litres of space up from just 348 litres from before. There's even a handy underfloor storage for you to use. So overall, this car's usability and practicality is top notch. And in case you're wondering, the spare tyre is mounted under the car and it's a full-size spare for all variants. Under the bonnet is a new 1.5 litre 2NR VE dual VVTi engine, replacing the older 3SZ VE DVVT unit from before. This is now a Euro 4 engine, up from Euro 3 of the old Alza, and it has very slightly higher output numbers compared to the same engine in the Myvi and Arus. The Alza now has 106 PS and 138 Newton meters of torque, which is 3 PS and 1 Nm more than before. Together with the new dual mode CVT or DCVT as already used in the latest Myvi and Ativa, Produa says the new Alza can now do as much as 22 km per litre on Malaysian roads. With that as an average, Produa claims you can drive it from KL to Penang on less than 40 ringgit worth of fuel. Helping that is a new Eco driving mode selectable via a drive button on the steering wheel. The Alza now has three drive modes to choose from, Eco, Normal and Power. As for safety, the new Alza has it all covered. Six airbags are fitted as standard across the board as is Advanced Safety Assist or ASA 3.0. So, Autonomous Emergency Braking or AEB, Lane Departure Warning and Prevention and Electronic Stability Control are all fitted as standard for everyone. The top spec AV adds on adaptive cruise control with a stop and hold start function. This is basically a low speed follow function that can be used in traffic jams, which is a first for Produa. The AV also gets lane keep control for a full level 2 semi-autonomous driving as well as a blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. Now, as for pricing, the all new second generation Produa Alza ranges from under 65,000 ringgit for the base X variant, while the Alza H goes for about 70,000 ringgit. The Alza AV tops out at around 77,000 with SST. If you're familiar with the old Alza prices, you may be surprised to see that even the cheapest new Alza X is more expensive than the old top Alza AV. But remember, the previous Alza is a 13 year old design with very basic safety specs just two airbags and no electronic stability control. It's about time the Alza catches up with the times. So that's our first look at the all new 2022 Perodua Alza. Yes, it's a fair bit more expensive than before, but if you were to compare this against the old car, this is clearly much bigger with far better features and especially better safety. And even at these higher prices, it is at least 15 to 20,000 ringgit cheaper than its non-national rivals. So for a lot of Malaysians who are looking for a compact MPV, the Alza remains your default value choice. So what do you think of this car's looks, interior, specs and safety? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.